Hello, uh, my name is Dave Koenig. I've been tattooing since 2001. Um, I currently reside in the Midwest. I work at a shop called Tent Sanctum in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I've been drawing as long as I remember. Um, I've also supplemented my income by doing a lot of commercial art. Um, I've done a lot of uh, show posters for international and national tattoo conventions. Um, I also have done artwork for Brickway uh, Brewery and Distillery in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I've also worked with a hundred acre wine group, uh, curbside clothing, and Old Bellows Jiu Jitsu. So this is going to be my uh, small tutorial video on my approach to scroll work. Um, I haven't had any previous training in it. I've, it's something that I just kind of, you know, watched uh, a few videos on and then just practiced on my own in the last decade or so. So um, enjoy. I hope you learned something from it. Um, if you like it, feel free to subscribe. Um, otherwise, do what you will. And I appreciate you. Bye. Tools of the trade. I'll uh, introduce the different tools as I'm going. I am pretty much just using, I think, a, uh, a Prismacolor Cool Gray. You know, a lot of the times I use the very thin ones just because the, the lead is a little harder and it, and it doesn't mark up on the page quite as much. Um, in fact, I think I'm actually going to pull this out. I'm going to use a Prismacolor uh, Very Thin. I'm going to use the Light Peach. Um, just because it's easier and it doesn't spread as your hands rubbing on it. So here is an example of what we're about to do. Um, I'm gonna pull this page out and just kind of set it up here. That way you can kind of get an idea of what we're going for. All right, first thing I do is I tend to look at the sheet and think about what I'm doing the scroll work for. Um, if I'm anticipating it's going to be something that's going to frame around an image or around a tattoo. With this, I'm just doing a freestand one. Um, basically, so you can just uh, have it as its own individual piece of art. With each uh, piece that I do, though, I often will take a picture of it. So that if, uh, you know, say I have to design something and it's a digital piece, then I can actually superimpose it, use it for um, uh, embellishments and ornamentations for other pieces I'm working on. All right, let's begin. Often when I'm thinking about designing a piece, um, I think about uh, um, how I'm gonna place it and then how I can use it to work into other pieces. Um, this piece here is pretty general. Um, if you think about it, I, I generally, I do two ways of composition. I'll, I'll think of like rule thirds where I actually will separate the paper into separate sections. And then I always have my lines kind of fall in those areas. So I'll kind of go here. And a lot of the times I don't even draw it. I just kind of imagine it where it might go. But in this case, I will draw. Kind of go here, here, maybe here. This isn't perfect, but it, you know, it just gives me an idea. All right, then from there, I generally will uh, kind of, it's just kind of like adding, um, uh, uh, putting pieces together that, you know, different S curves and C curves that will, you know, form into the shape that I want. So the first thing I'll do is I kind of, I'll, I'll find a point and I'll start at it, you know, like uh, I maybe come from this point. And then what I do is I start creating, I'll create like a big kind of backwards S curve. Um, that's kind of my foundation right there. Now from there, I just kind of build off and I might go, okay, you know what? I'm gonna throw another one here. And uh, this is stuff that I just kind of, kind of figured out on my own. So I can't say that the way I do might be entirely correct. I'm sure there's some rules and everything to it. Uh, so, uh, you know, all you guys are engravers and that, that are actually professional scroll work, you know, you know um, professionals at it, you know, I, I apologize if this is kind of, you know, not by the rules. Um, so I, I created this backward kind of S curve, kind of like this piece. Um, then from there, I created a smaller one 
that kind of goes right and it's a little bit smaller. And then from there, what I might do is I might do a little lip here. If you want to, you can create it as a C, backwards C. You know, this side I might go like this um, because a lot of the time scroll work, it's very organic and it's very, uh, um, it reminds me of maybe how plants or something would grow. So often I'll have the bigger loops on top, you know, and then down here I'll have some leafing off. Maybe I'll come here, connect this one. Now I might do something like this to kind of break it up. Now to make things a little interesting for me, sometimes I'll add little like, you can see how this piece comes around and then it kind of lips off. And then I actually have it so it almost kind of has a hand effect and, and I put some in the background. And of course, um, when you do that, you know, uh, depending on how you how you want to want it to read, you'll put the, uh, the stuff in the background will be a bit lighter so it has a little more dimension to the piece. So say I want to do that same effect, what I might do is I might cut straight through this and then just lip it out right here. Now, my grid here, things kind of follow because it starts from this point, comes down and crosses through this point, and then it ends in this quadrant right here. I shouldn't say quadrant section right here. Now, then I've got this line right here that kind of goes along here. So what I might do is I might actually stretch this out and have it touch that point. It's just a little bit more pleasing to the eye, just like how I pulled this one. And it just kind of hits this point, runs along this line of horizon, and then actually curls inside the center section. Now from there, I just start building things. And as I draw, if you notice, my hand stays back on the pencil as I'm kind of loosely sketching things and where I want it. Then as I want to start refining the piece, like, I mean, you can get so many of these curls and whatever in, and that if you do it too much and you just sketch it too much, then eventually it's just going to be an absolute mess. So what you do is you just start slowly choking up the pencil as you're refining the piece. So I choke up the pencil. That means I can allow more pressure to the drawing. Now, often when I'm creating these curves, I might actually fold this one in. Uh, when I'm creating these curves, I'm rarely bending my wrist. Most of my motion or uh, the access point, I guess you could say, where I'm moving my arm is either going to be from my shoulder or from my elbow. And the reason for that is if I'm, if, if I'm sitting here trying to draw real tied up with my wrist, trying to create this same curve. So this curve's like here. But if I was to try doing it like that tight with my wrist, and it's going to be very shaky, it's going to be very stiff. And the thing that we want is we want motion. We want uh, movement in all of this. So allow yourself to loosen up. All right, as you can see, I start refining on pieces. And if you notice, I do slowly start choking up on my pencil. As I'm doing it, I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, you know what? This piece is in front, so I'm gonna kind of hit harder with these lines. And then I'm gonna think, like, it kind of cups. So if it cups, then I'm gonna do a little line right in here. I'm gonna keep it lighter than the rest because I want this to sit forward, this to sit back. All right, now this, usually I would have had it folding over, but I already started drawing it like this where it actually folds like this. It's probably not right, but I don't care. And I think it looks kind of fun like this. It fucks with your head a little. Add another little C curve here.
Now, if I'm creating a back line like this, like this is the foreground, this is lighter because it's in the back. I have, I gotta make sure to try to follow my line. So this would go behind there and then cut through here. You can actually just kind of go over if you want and then erase it. That's a good way to start, but you know, I'd like to say that I've been doing it long enough where I can just kind of eyeball it. I think I'm gonna go like that. Another thing that I like to implement in my scroll work is almost the effect of uh, like traditional Japanese uh, waves. You know, and the thing I like about the waves is they actually will, they almost come up like dragon claws. So they'll actually come off and kind of claw out. And then it's cool because then you give it that little curve at the top. And this right here is essentially like a little Japanese wave. Um, I was in Japan in 2019 and... Um, um, Oh, God, it's on the tip of my tongue. I failed to remember the uh, name of the temple we visited where it was uh, all wood carvings and, and uh, a lot of the water wood carvings they had on that temple. Um, I took a ton of pictures of them for reference, and uh, that's become kind of the staple reference uh, for a lot of my scroll work and a lot of my, my Japanese waves and even if I'm drawing waves to kind of have more of an American traditional feel. Now, often I like to have pieces like, instead of just having constant C curves and S curves, I want things kind of overlap. It gives it a little more, you know, makes it a little more interesting for me and a little more challenging to draw because I appreciate a good challenge. Um, what I might do is like right here, all right, I'm going to make this kind of a leaf. That's kind of going over this, and then it goes under here. You know what? For shits and giggles, I'm going to add another part just because I like this pattern. It creates a pattern that's pleasing to the eye. Come in the river and get your fill. Sniffing like all right. Now I gotta make sure to foreshadow that line because that's coming from here. I might change my angle on it, but that's okay. There's that Japanese wave effect again. Now, when I'm coming up, it depends if you want to go even with this, but to me, this looks a little wonky. Like, this isn't going to work. Um, I really like this curve, but this just drops. I mean, if I was to have it drop somewhere near this line, it would make more sense to me. But since it goes right here, I don't want to just drop it like that. It just, I don't know. I mean, it might not be wrong. But what I'll actually do is, if that's the case, I'm going to go here and I actually have it kind of spawn from this side. I don't know if spawn is the right word. I apologize, I, I draw, I don't talk very much on camera, so I don't think about what I'm saying sometime. Most of the time. It's mighty hard. Now, I like to complement things where if I have these small curls, I like to complement it with a big, long curve, you know. Um, I feel like complementing or using the contrast of things tends to make things more interesting. Um, you know, like a lot of the times if I'm using a heavy line, I like to use a thin line next to it. Um, you know, same with colors, even though I'm, I'm not very great at color theory, but... Um, 
you know, I like to use the complementary colors a lot in tattoos because then you get that, uh, that uh, the, the extreme differences and then it makes it just more interesting. I imagine it might be because we, being humans, we have like, we're attracted to duality somehow. And so therefore when we see things that complement each other, it just naturally becomes interesting. And sometimes you don't even know why. I'll pull this here. This is very open. I think I'm gonna go here. Now, a lot of the time, and it's not always correct, but a lot of the time I like to get rid of this little line here and almost connect things. That's entirely, I think, based on the mere fact that I'm a huge fan of uh, Art Nouveau and Alphonse, I don't know if it's Mucha or Mucha, but uh, a lot of his stuff has that open space. And it, I don't know, it's just cool. I just think it's a cool look. Good thing about this uh, board is it's easy for me to move around. It's smaller. Too, just for the hell of it. Um, that's what I was. I was looking at what I wrote down for this video. One of uh, some great examples of scroll work and engravers. You know, one of my favorites is uh, uh, what was it, uh, Sean Hughes. Um, Sean Hughes, he goes by, uh, I think it's like Robo Hobo, R-O-B-O-H-O-B-O. -O -O. Um, it's funny because he, uh, I've had the honor to do collaboration pieces with him. Um, and I knew he was, you know, a master of his craft, but then, uh, I didn't realize like, you know how good he was until I started looking at his stuff and he had already asked me to do a collaboration so it was almost uh, borderline nerve-wracking when I was trying to draw some scroll work for him that we did on like a buffalo head nickel um, we've done a few other pieces but uh, yeah and he's phenomenal like he's a phenomenal engraver and just you know I've never met him in person but he seems like a fucking awesome dude um, but if you're looking for like reference or, you know, somebody to inspire you and look at their scroll work, he's definitely somebody who's inspired me. Um, what is it? The other one, uh, and I've been following him for a long time is, uh, what is it? Uh, his name's Rick Simmons. Um, I think he goes by Bez Poke, the engraver. It's like B-E-S-P-O-K-E -E under slash engraver. Um, his stuff is pretty phenomenal, and he seems like he's an awesome dude. I've never, of course, I've never met him, but it's nice to have the world of social media to kind of bring us all together, right? just about done with this I'm not gonna go you know it's nice I like to spend a lot of time on my sketches and just refine it and everything but uh I'm trying to make this a uh, fairly quick tutorial so I don't entirely lose your attention all right now Kind of like with this piece, I embellish the corners there and kind of turn them the opposite direction just for fun. So I might just go like this, make a hook here, and then maybe do a little hook here. I want it so it has a natural flow 
where it looks like it could actually be growing from this. All right, and there you go. Um, essentially, that is the sketch. On to the line work. As far as materials I'm using, uh, first things I use is uh, I have a, uh, what is it, a Kafka uh, script brush, very, th very fine. Um, I also have a number two, if I want to use it, for some of the thicker, bolder lines. Um, I also have a tiny little brush here, too, which I don't even know if I'll use or not. Um, as far as the paint, I'm actually using um, opaque Createx airbrush colors. Um, I just like the flow of it. I like the consistency of it. I also use the black. Um, I use the Createx black for a lot of uh, uh, shading and line work. Um, it's a great paint. I love using it. All right. Here we go. I usually like to pull these lines. Don't fret too much about uh, some of the inconsistencies created by the brush. Um, honestly, I kind of like them. Every once in a while, if my brush starts to get uh, too thick with those lines, I'll just give it a quick, quick wash and re-dip.
these long curves. Um, goes back to, uh, instead of trying to turn it from the wrist, try to turn it from uh, the joint closer to your core. So I'll go to the elbow, trying to turn. If it's still coming out shaky from there, then I'll try to curve the angle with by using my shoulder. Excuse me, I'm drinking coffee. And I've got bad allergies, so I apologize if I'm sniffing a lot. That is the initial hard line for it. Now I'm gonna do a little shading before I start doing any of the detail lines. Now I've switched to a charcoal shading brush. Can't, I can't even tell what it is. I think it's got so much paint on it. Um, I think it's a six round. Yep. Wet my brush first. Paint. Now this paper is not watercolor paper so getting some of those blends might be a little more difficult but that's okay Now, if you don't get those smooth blends, then I try to make sure to um, flow my hand with like kind of the shape of what this would be. It's kind of have a curve, so I'd kind of curve my blend out so that the lines are like that. Gives it a little bit of a, uh, a texture, gives it a little more form. Now before I st start on this peak part, I'll let this kind of dry out. So I'll just go right over here. cover up my mistakes on my lines with shading. If you're a tattooer, you entirely understand that. Thank you. 
Instead of pulling the paint, now I'm pushing the paint. I wish I had an easier way to explain how to uh, move the paint around, but it's more or less one of those things, just like anything, you can kind of learn the fundamentals, but until you actually get the time putting in, hours of practice, that's when you'll start developing that skill.
brush is getting old and I haven't taken proper care of it. It's not blending like how I want it to. Sometimes I, where the lines aren't, I might add a little more depth to some of these by adding a little shading in the back. My apologies for the silence at points. Once I start getting, once I start painting, sometimes I forget that I'm recording.
A lot of times with these, I'll go back in and re-highlight areas that I really want to punch. Now I'm clearly moving kind of fast on this just so that I don't entirely bore you guys. You can take as much time on a piece as you want. A lot of the paintings I'll spend a lot of time just on one blend just to get it just right. But in this case, I'm just kind of having fun.
back to the line work. This is a fun part for me. That little leaf effect, all you do is you go here, then you give it a little push, and then pull. that one. Excuse me.
some of these little details and accents. I don't think I can even properly explain them to you. It's just, where's the die? Flow with the go, or you just kind of feel it as you do it, and that's just something you gotta do over time, I suppose. Then I'll start looking and I'm like, okay, I've got some down here, this netting. I got a little netting here, here. I might want something up in here just because it feels a little bit on the naked side. But there is a fine line between, you know, embellishing it and overkilling it. So I'm just about done. And that is my scroll work process. Feel free to leave any comments or advice or, uh, you know, if you have any requests for me to do any other sort of tutorials, I would love to hear them. I'm grateful for all the support and I'm grateful for everybody who's been following my work over the years. Um, means a lot to me. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to keep up with my most updated work at, you know, on Instagram at Dave Koenig Art. Um, or you can always visit my website at dconigart.com. Um, regardless, I appreciate you. Have a kick-ass day. Thank you much. Bye-bye.